So now we've structured our app in a more correct way, we can go ahead and create the main page. So here we are in our property cross main item file. And what we're going to do is throw in our main page. So you might want to call this property cross main page dot or not dot QML. We'll do that in a second. Property cross main page. You'll notice our ID highlights with an M300 error, which is a fancy number saying we just don't know where this is or what it is. And that's because we haven't created it. Okay, so we're going to create a page. Now, where are we going to create this page? Well, of course, we could just throw it into our QML folder, but that's not very neat. So instead, we are going to separate that out into its own pages folder. Now, Qt Creator, the IDE is a little bit quirky. So what we have to do is right click QML, click Add New. We'll just add an item, press Choose, and we'll give this a name. And obviously we'll give it the name that's missing currently from our code, property cross main page. And we want to put this in a pages folder. So what we're going to do is go down to this path and either, I'm not sure this is going to work. Actually it might, nope, pages isn't there. So let's cancel that. We're going to hit browse and this will take us to the QML folder. We're going to go new folder and we're going to call this pages and we're going to select that folder and just make sure it's selected there. Now we're going to hit next and finish and that will reload everything and we should have the pages folder. I really wish Qt would allow you to add a folder. That would be very handy. Okay, so now we have a property cross main page.qml, which our property cross main item should actually be able to find, but it can't currently find it. And why is that? Well, it doesn't know about the folder. So what we're going to do is say import, open our quotation marks, pages. And you'll see the error goes away because it now knows where to find that main page. Okay, so that's all sorted. If we ran that in the live view, then there should be no issues and our application will load, our blank application that is, without any horrible errors. Okay, brilliant. So let's open our property cross main page. And this is where we're going to create most of the things that we will see on screen. So the very first thing that we're going to do, of course, is we're going to give it an ID. I'm not sure we need to give it an ID yet, so we'll just leave that out. Now, we're going to give this a property called content padding. And we're going to make this property read only. That means it can't be changed when our application runs because we don't want it to be changed. And we're going to tell this this is a property real content padding. And I'll get into what real means much later on. We don't have to worry about it. So what is content padding? Well, we're just going to tell our application we want you to put a bit of white space or just space, not even white space, just space between the edge of the device and our actual content. And so what do we want to tell it this content padding is? Well, we're going to define this using DP. And what is DP? I believe from memory it's device pixels or device points, something like that. But it's a way of not having to take account of the number of pixels on a device. Instead, it always ensures that whatever value you put in is the same physical size on somebody's screen. So it doesn't matter what size device they've got, a DP is the same across all devices. And that's something that's arisen over the years as the various screen res resolutions have increased. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to use the current theme and we're going to get the navigation bar from it. And we're going to say we want you to use the default bar item padding. Now, there's a lot of stuff I'm going to type here that I'm not going to go into the depths of because it's just basically all scaffolding and I'll confuse you if I explain every single thing. And that's not the point of this course. The point is to get you up and running. So all we're doing here is we're setting a couple of defaults that vPlay will actually take care of on our behalf. So the next property that we need is a property 
alias, and this is called the child navigation stack. And we'll give this a name simply of nav stack. So this allows our launcher, our app demo launcher, to track the navigation changes within our app. You know how before we had a navigation stack? Well, by assigning the nav stack to a property called nav stack, we can now allow stuff like Google Analytics, if we use that plugin, which is a plugin from vPlay, we can allow Google Analytics to track the way that our users use the app. And that's coming into the realm of user experience uh, and user interface. So that's why we do that. Then we're going to define something called use safe area. And we're going to define this as false. So this will encourage our application to use the whole screen. And at the moment, this is showing an error. And that's because I've made an error. This should be a page, not an item. And it can't find a page because we haven't imported vplay apps, I believe it is, vplay, that's capital P, apps 1.0. And now our page is defined and it knows what use safe area is. Okay, so that's all sorted, we have our page. So what do we need now? Well, we need that navigation stack back because in most, if not all apps, we normally navigate by adding another page or removing pages. So. Let's have a navigation stack. And you'll notice it auto completes for us, nav stack. Open and close our curly braces. And let's give this an ID called nav stack. Now I've called it that because we're allowing an outside function of our application to access this nav stack. So it needs an ID that it can latch onto so it knows what we're talking about. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Well, let's create a split view. So now a split view is instead of having one scrolling view, which you might think of as simply this page, a split view is exactly what we see on our screen actually in our IDE. We have something over on the side here and according to what we select on there, we show the appropriate page over on the right hand side. That's what a split view is. And that's something you see a lot on the iPad. You also see it on the iPhone, but instead of showing that split view because your screen space is limited, you have to actually select a menu button in order to see something. So let's create that by defining what's called a left column index. And the left column index tells us where the left column is, and that's at position one and then we're going to create a split view for this called tablet so this just says i want you to treat this split view like we're on a tablet but it will accommodate if we're on a normal device so i know that was a rubbish explanation but i don't feel we need to explain that right now what's important for you to grasp is page navigation stack these properties that come under page where you can define the safe area and you can define things like the padding of that page. And you can also have a property alias that references something inside of that page. So you've got this nav stack with an ID of nav stack. Okay, that was a lot to take in. Finally, we have a nav stack. We need a page inside of that nav stack. And what are we gonna say here? Well, we're just gonna give this a title because we've done a lot of coding called property cross. So now if I go ahead and I save that, we open up our live editor or our live viewer rather, that should then create a nav stack, which will create a bar at the top called property cross with our page title on it. So. That was a long, long way around <laughs> a lot of refactoring of our code. So I'll just run over that refactoring again, just so you're clear. So property cross main is the entry point of our app. The ID of that app is simply app, and that's just local to our application. Nothing else can see that, obviously. 
Then we say, I want you to create this property cross main item. So what is that? Well, this is just an item, which is the base view of all the things that we see in our apps. And we're telling it, fill the parent, which is basically the screen. And then once you've done that, go ahead and create the property cross main page. Now, the reason we created this intermediate item was so that later on, we can have things that call the network for us and process logic for us because we don't want to clutter the visual files. And I'll explain why we do that in a later module. So let's go to our property cross main page that's been called. We've got a couple properties, read only because we don't want to change it, content padding. And what this does is give us some default bar padding. I wouldn't worry about these. You, you'll never need to change these. Property alias, the nav stack, because we want to access the nav stack in our plugins, such as Google Analytics, so we can see what a user is doing. We had our use safe area, and I explained what that was. And then, of course, the important bits. Are we've created the navigation stack that we had before anyway. We've given it an ID. We've said, I want you to make this into a split view. So if you don't know what a split view is, simply open up Google, put in split view, iOS, I think Apple has a very good documentation page on it. Probably Google does as well. And then inside of that nav stack, let's load up one page, title property cross, so we can actually check what we've done and see that everything works.